Yeah, I'm going to make clickbait videos from now onwards so that I can monetize my channel, earn a lot of money, go to the moon like Elon Musk. But joke aside, let's talk about the reasons why do I like OpenBSD. The first thing is that OpenBSD reminds me of the good old days of Linux. I have started to use Linux in 2003. Back then, things were way different than one, what you see nowadays. And I really like that, uh, that feeling. And of course, Linux was the first operating system that I got exposed to after Windows. And I didn't know anything about Linux, about Unix, about OpenBSD. I didn't know even the OpenBSD existed. But since, let's say, last 10 years, many things has changed in the Linux era. And they are not necessarily done the way that I would like to be. So as a result of it, I prefer OpenBSD over Linux in many use cases. The second point is that uh, OpenBSD is a living dinosaur to me. It has been around since many years ago and also they take the good practices from the past and also the good practices that are done in the current software development and they incorporate both practices. So not both practices, they incorporate all the good practices. So it's a connection between past and the current. And also, it gives me some sort of a nostalgia feeling when I, whenever I use OpenBSD because I've seen that I can go and modify the configuration files without using a program and then see the result of it, see the outcome of it. So in that regards, I really like it and I appreciate to use uh, that. I appreciate the creators of OpenBSD. The third thing is about the productivity. OpenBSD makes me productive. Not because I cannot watch Netflix or Amazon Primes or I listen to Spotify, things like that, due to the lack of DRM support, but mainly due to the fact that they keep a high level of the backward compatibilities and they do not change things unnecessarily. And they do not just reinvent the wheel for the sake of reinventing the wheel. And their main focus is basically on the security, on making things stable, running things smoothly, etc., etc. And they do not just like go outside of their ways to create software or like changing subsystems just uh, spontaneously and stuff like that. Next point is about the simplicity. OpenBSD is a very simple and straightforward operating system. It, it has no complication to it. And it's very understandable, it's very lightweight. Of course, you can install the bloatware like a Mozilla Firefox and stuff like that. But out of the box, installation is super simple, super straightforward. And I think, in my honest opinion, OpenBSD is the only uh, operating system as of, as of now that uh, still remains true to the Unix philosophy. And it's still, uh, it has incorporated, it, it's been incorporating the Unix philosophy to its core. They are reading everything from simple uh, plain file text files and they are writing to uh, simple plain text files. The, the text files are user editable. You can read and understand what the text file is doing and the configurations is saved in the text files. They do not store in binary blobs or in the obscure locations or words in the binary database files or things like that and also they do not make unnecessary abstractions for example if you want to comp if let's compare things like sndio and uh, pulse audio pulse audio is an abstraction layer on top of also it has many good features but when was the last time that you used uh, the one of the latest shiny features probably was never Whereas SNDIO is super simple, is super straightforward. It has the necessary utilities, it has necessary things, features, and stuff like that, that is going to satisfy 80, 90% of a normal user use cases. And for that 10%, you can obviously find a workaround, or if you feel adventurous, you can create your own stuff or extend the code base to satisfy your needs. So in that regard, I really appreciate it because 
when you keep things very simple and stupid you you have a very easy time to troubleshoot you have you have uh, you don't have a a system that is a sluggish or a slow or things like that is agile is fast and is very basically is very flexible to the changes next point is about the uh, authentic community this one was the main selling point of openbsd to me i think the openbsd community has certain core values of course it's not written or advertised anywhere but they have a core values which actually is aligned with the unix philosophy and they do not take they do not go out of their ways they do not actually try to break that values so that actually they can satisfy more use cases or add more features or things like that the core values from my perspective when i use openbsc things that i find it is that they have a great documentation the code base is super small super clean and they do not add a binary blobs stuff like that that they don't care what the end user thinks about it like they they assume to you that you are a power user and you can do whatever you want with a the system they do not dumb you down and provide the synthetic sugar api kind of the stuff to make you happy because they expect you to have a basic knowledge and also the system is so simple and straightforward if you don't know anything you are, you are going to learn it very soon and also they are not a corporate sellout they basically they get their stuff like they, should, they get the funding things like that from corporations but they do their own things right and they have a security first mindset which i really appreciate it and i'm going to discuss that one later on but the main point is that they actually do uh, certain extreme practices that from a perspective of an outsider looks very weird but actually that's the correct way of doing things because again they do not keep a code that that has been around for a very long time and nobody maintains a spaghetti code things like that they do not add the binary blobs or do everything like enabling drm and stuff like that I really appreciate those points and i think as of now the only true op true free operating system is the open bsd free as in terms of freedom linux it is not that uh, free anymore because it has a uh, binary gloves uh, drivers things like that and and many proprietary software and uh, programs have been ported to linux of course that's uh, your freedom that you can actually use or you don't you, if you don't want you don't use it uh, stuff like that but linux is now more or less is a commercial product rather than a community driven product that means the top corporations the top contributors are the corporations as a result of it since they are the top contributors they can influence the linux roadmap at least when it comes to the linux kernel development OpenBSD is truly community driven and also the method of development put it into the Eric Raymond terms is a bazaar model whereas Linux um, over the years has been diverged from the bazaar model and it is more or less like a cathedral nowadays next point is about the great documentation and great man pages that is undefeatable you can disagree with me in any other points but you cannot disagree with me in the documentation of openbsd they have documentation for everything the documentation is up to date concise super simple straightforward straight to the point it is not like a gnu man pages that is a uh, cryptic and you need to get a freaking dig uh, degree in the linguistic to decipher what they mean and at the end of the day you don't find your answer next point is about the clean a small code base as a software developer i really appreciate having a clean a small code base and i don't want to deal with the code base that is complicated that is a spaghetti code that is gigantic i think any software developer prefer that and in openbsd they sacrifice even features to keep uh, this uh, philosophy alive to stick to this point for example they have removed a linux binary compatibility layer they have removed bluetooth support because the code was horrible the code was poorly written and nobody wanted to maintain it and if if you take it into the terms of the 
true community community doesn't mean that you take everything from it and run away community means that you take something and you give something back for example in one of my videos i have discussed about the uh the adding the mediatek support to the openbsc 7.1 who do you think added that and a person a normal person who a contributor a passionate person added that driver to the openbsd that's a true meaning of returning something back to the community in case of the bluetooth i i have heard many complaints people saying that oh openbsd doesn't even support the basic functionality all right fair enough why you don't add those stuff by yourself why you don't start uh, porting a bluetooth subsystem or something like that or write the drivers so maybe we need to think about also a bit differently when it comes to the openbsd next point is about doing uh, diy uh, stuff openbsd is a diy uh, operating system you get a very base bare bone uh, operating system when you install it and you expect to know what you are going to do and you are entirely empowered and you are in the full control of doing whatever that you want to do so many people they don't like it they want to have everything out of the box provided to them oh, i disagree with that i'm actually I, I like to wire things up by myself goof around the system even though it may come at the cost of breaking my system the last point is about the security i intentionally put the security as last because of multiple things the first thing is that i think is very apparent reason i don't need to talk about it the second thing is that if you are using openbsc on desktop on laptop and prior to that you were using an operating system an open source operating system like linux or freebsd and you have a basic common understanding of the security basic 101 knowledge you probably won't be way more secure if you use openbsd or at least the security aspect won't be so tangible to you however when it comes to stuff like uh, servers like uh, iot devices embedded devices things like that security should be the first criteria when selecting an operating system for normal desktop user I didn't find uh, much of edge of having uh, OpenBSD or versus Linux, but maybe I'm not very well educated, really, very very uh, well versed on that topic. So if you have more insight about it, please put it in the comments below. I really appreciate that. And also a small uh, side note, uh, since we have reached the end of the video, is that what uh, many comparisons that I have done. OpenBSD versus Linux kind of thing doesn't mean that a Linux is doesn't mean that the Linux is a bad operating system. It is not by any means. It is way better than macOS, better than um, things like uh, Windows. Windows is horrible, but also it has its own use cases and it actually shines in different aspects. And OpenBSD shines in a different aspects, even though both of them are Unix-like operating systems. If you are if you want if you are looking forward to uh, watch Netflix, Amazon Prime, or um, I don't know, listen to the Spotify, play games, Steam games, stuff like that, or even on the software development department, if you want to use Kubernetes, Docker, uh, latest version of JavaScript, uh, Visual Studio Code, probably you you are way better if you use linux not to mention virtualization but if you want to have a very simple a straightforward operating system that you have a chance to learn many things about the underlying mechanics and play around with things and do not have much of a expectations or let's say a radical needs then probably openbsd is going to suit you very well because you can achieve everything that you wish uh, except the evil stuff again like drm but for the software development side openbsd is not the best tool if you are doing c programming it's fantastic if you are doing java developments it's good but if you are doing something like a javascript it probably is not going to work very well because you also don't have a vs code you don't have the ecosystem it doesn't also support things like a docker uh, virtualizations Kubernetes and stuff like that of course those are not really 
related to the JavaScript, but the modern software, uh, modern software development, it involves those kind of stuff. So that's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Don't pro don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Have a great time. Cheers.